Sí. Walters can't quite get there, hooked away. And now pressure still on, though. Spackman. Here's Richard Goff. Trevor Stephen. Looking for a one-two, there's Walters. I think Walters was trying to chip. But he, he actually had been injured just before then, wasn't fully in control of himself. Richard Goff. Walters. Sooners, and I wonder what's going through his mind now. Seconds away from his last game, that's a very good ball indeed, Trevor Stephen. Will Johnson is on the inside, there he is. On towards David Dodge, oh yes! A very good goal indeed. To wrap it up, seal the day. And put Rangers, the supporters, the manager on the field, in right petal for the champagne. Great ball this by Johnson, beautifully finished off by David Dawes as he's done for so many teams. That's 2-0 and we've played just over the 90 minutes. It could not have come at a better time for that man. The final whistle should go any second. Richard Goff. And then it goes. Graham Sunnis has played his last senior match and joins his colleagues on the field, the team that he has steered to his third Premier Division Championship in four years to greet the crowd. And there he is, Sunnis, right in the middle of place. He, he, he desperately misses playing. He once told me it's, it's more frustrating than he thought it would be. Graham Sunnis, who came into the game in 1970, played 423 league games in England, scored 60 goals, he got 43 caps, he played in 36 major European games, his greatest achievement, the European Cup with Liverpool. And you know, you've really got to ask yourself, when you look at the stature of the players who were alongside him, that he himself is one of the great players of the generation, but one poses a question, will we ever see the likes again? And uh, I, here it comes, Terry Butcher. A cordon of order formed by the Dunfermline players. It's been an entertaining game of football, capping, a great season for this man again. This is the third time that Butcher and his colleagues have done that in four years. And this is now the very familiar ritual of giving everybody a, a, a touch of the cup. The sharing of hands. And Adam McCoy, who does enjoy a celebration. There is Emotional occasion for him. A greatly emotional occasion for this man who came into the game in 1970 when he signed as a teenager for Tottenham Hotspur. He went on, of course, to Middlesbrough and Liverpool. He played 423 league games in England. He scored 60 goals. He got 43 caps for Scotland. And he played in 36 major European games. And, you know, he was one of the most significant players of his generation. And if you link his name with so many others he played with, 
you really have to pose a question, will we ever see the likes again? Yes, an afternoon of emotion and celebration at Ibrox. Dunfermline played their part. Let's not forget that they too achieved their objection for the, uh, their objective rather for the season. But it was, of course, Rangers Day. And afterwards, Archie spoke to Gary Stevens and suggested that it had been an afternoon he had enjoyed. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we came out to enjoy it uh, last year against Aberdeen, but unfortunately, they spoiled the party for us a little bit. And uh, obviously, we, we came out today with uh, with every intention of not letting that happen again. Um, we had a few chances first half, but it was nice to see the first goal. Um, uh, well, it, it actually, it was a superb run by Mark Walt. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, Mark's been doing it all season, um, and it, it's nice to finish on a high note, isn't it? Mm. And obviously, after the second goal, we went in uh, cruise for the last 30 seconds or so. <laughs> again, again a, an excellent second goal. Yes. Well, um, good ball by Morris Johnson. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, what can you say about Morris? Um, he, he had it tough for the first uh, maybe 10 games or so, trying to establish himself. But he's a firm favourite with the fans now, and um, I think the fans enjoyed themselves uh, more than anybody today. You must have envied the way David Dodds actually finished. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, uh, he keeps coming on, scoring goals for us. Uh, he's proved to be a perfect substitute, although obviously he, mm. he'd like to be in from the start. I would... How did you feel when the manager came on? Um, oh, it's nice to see him play. He I mean, couldn't he... get a ball for the first No, that's five right. I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't by design. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I can't, I can't say it was, otherwise, I probably won't play at the start of next season. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, he had a little run around there for 10 minutes without the ball and um, he's pulled his he hamstring as well. So. I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean, the right. brain's still there. So. Of course, and that's what it's all about. I mean, uh, he enjoys the five sides that, uh, that we play with day in, day out. Um, and he enjoyed himself thoroughly today. How has this season been compared to the others? Um, well, the others mean in last year because mm. obviously I've only been here two years. But uh, um, I think having won the league teams tend to come after you a little bit um, obviously would have been Rangers uh, uh, you know mm -hmm. so much more um, so it's been very difficult all year and especially seen as uh, we, we got off such a bad start but um, all credit to all the players here and the fans have stuck by us and the gaffer stuck by the players because obviously I you would imagine once or twice he's thought about changing things. Have you become at least a little bit a, a Scotsman in any sense at all? I think you're bound to do really. I'm, I'm living in a lovely part of Scotland. I really enjoy um, playing for Glasgow Rangers, um, you know, obviously the, the biggest club in Britain. Yes, and a big date for Gary Stevens tomorrow as well because he gets married. So to Gary and to the future Mrs. Stevens, our very best wishes. Well, there was further good news for the Ibrox club after today's match when Scottish Brewers confirmed that they had signed a new agreement to sponsor Rangers for a further six years with an option for three years beyond that. Managing director Tony Belfield was reluctant to put a figure on the deal, but it is widely believed that if it runs for that full nine-year period, it will be worth in excess of £10 million to Rangers. Clearly, both parties are delighted with the continuation of the sponsorship and it further emphasises Rangers' determination to remain at the top of Scottish and, indeed, European football. Meantime, elsewhere in the Premier Division today, second-placed Hearts drew one all at Dundee United with Alan McLaren equalising a Darren Jackson goal for United. Aberdeen owed their win over St Mirren to two late goals by Brian Irvin and Charlie Nicholas in a match which saw Willie Miller make a confident return from injury and Theo Snelders not having a, to make a save in the entire 90 minutes. At Fair Park, Jackie Jakinowski put Celtic in front after just six minutes, but a Davy Cooper penalty four minutes before half-time maintained Motherwell's unbeaten record against Celtic this season. In fact, Motherwell should have wrapped up both points. Both Boyd and Kirk missed good chances against a Celtic side who have now gone seven games without a victory. Hibs wasted their chance of improving their European prospects when they could only draw at home with relegated Dundee. Billy Dodds put Dundee in front before half-time with Keith Houchin equalising for the Edinburgh side and John Collins missed a penalty with just seven minutes left. So the one remaining issue in the Premier, that of the final UEFA Cup place, is no clearer with all four sides involved taking a point today. Celtic meet Aberdeen at Parkhead on Wednesday with the final round of matches to come next Saturday.